Something mysterious is stirring in the deep waters off the coast of Northern California. Fishermen at Pillar Point Harbor in Half Moon Bay have been reporting bizarre sightings of huge alien creatures. Large packs of invading cannibalistic predators seemingly from another world. Nobody knows exactly where they came from, what they're doing here, or how long they'll stay. But one thing Captain Tom Matouche knows is how to hunt them down. Every single time when it hits the deck, you see the angler back away as if it's some kind of an alien that's about to come after them. We head out to sea on the 53-foot charter fishing boat Huli Cat in pursuit of Decidigus gigas, what Mexican fishermen call Diablos Rojos, or Red Devils. They're better known as Humboldt squid or jumbo squid. Here's a fish that's uh, mean, a fish that's strong, a fish that can take a bite out of you. You got a fish that can wrap tentacles around you and just scratch and claw you quite a bit. We've seen the beaks. You just don't want to get near those beaks, this big old parrot-like beak that you absolutely have to avoid unless you want a serious cut and slash in your skin. Like Joining the expedition is Professor William Gilley of Stanford University's Hopkins Marine Station in Pacific Grove. Professor Gilley has been studying squid for 30 years. So this squid uh, only thinks about two things. One is eating and one is reproducing. Uh, even though they have big brains, I don't think they spend a lot of time philosophizing. Today, he's hitched a ride to find out more about these mysterious creatures. We don't know a whole lot about the behavior of this squid in water under natural circumstances. They spend most of the day down at a thousand foot sort of level, actively swimming, actively moving in this low oxygen zone there, uh, probably feeding. The natural range of the Humboldt squid is the warmer equatorial waters off South America, but they have visited northern waters in the past. In the mid-1930s, they were particularly abundant for a few years, and they interfered with fisheries. They were um, seen up and down the California coastline. Originally, it was a bit of a novelty, and people would go out squid fishing, but they, they quickly wore out their welcome. There's a great quote from a California fishing game biologist from the time who said, squid fishing is a hilarious sport for a few minutes, but it becomes quickly tiresome day after day. After their mysterious arrival in the 30s, the jumbo squid disappeared for more than 60 years. They turned up again in 1997 when a warm El Nino current curved northward. But then, as the current went away, so did the squid. Then, in 2002, the jumbo squid returned yet again, this time in the millions. And their range expansion now reaches as far north as Alaska. So the causes of the range expansion um, aren't really well understood, but there's a couple likely suspects, uh, and climate is the most likely suspect. The problem is we don't exactly know why, what the mechanism is for that. I think they have come because of a climate change, but not the climate change that most people think about. Most people think about the surface of the water warming, uh, global warming, things like that. I think the climate change that, that is relevant to the squid is one that's happening a thousand feet below the surface of the ocean. Jumbo squid are known to be mesopelagic animals, which means they live between 600 and 3,000 feet below the surface. But unlike most deep water creatures, jumbo squid move up and down the water column, often rising to the surface to feed. This isn't your little one-foot market squid. Jumbo squid are voracious predators. So the squid have 10 tentacles. They have eight shorter arms and two long feeding tentacles. When they approach a prey, all the tentacles come together in a cone with the two feeding tentacles inside. As they swim towards a prey, they open their arms up and the two feeding tentacles lash out and grab their prey. The feeding tentacles especially have these very sharp razor uh, chitinous rings on each of the suckers that are very effective at grabbing onto the prey. So once they've grabbed onto a prey, it's not gonna go anywhere. They'll bring that prey back to the beak. They chew it up almost like a corn in the cob, chewing, going through the fish very fast. This is one unusual animal, 
They use jet propulsion to fly through the water at speeds over 25 miles per hour and have skin cells called chromatophores that enable them to change colors from red to white. They are one of the fastest growing animals in the ocean, weighing as much as 100 pounds and getting up to six feet long in their short two-year lifespan. The squid have a reputation probably rightly deserved for, for being incredibly uh, um, aggressive, voracious predators. They'll attack anything that moves. They're, they're highly cannibalistic. They'll eat their brothers and sisters. When they're in an aggravated state of mind, they'll basically attack and, and try and consume whatever comes their way. So there, there's stories of fishermen falling overboard and, and not coming back to the surface. I don't know if those stories are true, but I do know that I wouldn't want to be diving or swimming around with them when they we're in that kind of feeding frenzy. Having an animal like that suddenly take over these waters has fishery biologists concerned. There's potential for the jumbo squid to have massive impacts on the ecosystems and on the fisheries that coastal communities depend on. Here in the California Current, they're eating market squid, they're eating California sardine, they're eating northern anchovy, Pacific cake, and they're eating a lot of rockfish. And those are some of the biggest fisheries that we have in the California Current. On board the Hooli Cat, the fishermen have hit the jackpot. On the other side of the boat, Professor Gilly takes one of the captured squid and attaches a satellite tag. Using this, scientists can learn more about the Humboldt squid's life cycle and their effects on the so, ecosystem. So this tag will record uh, temperature, depth, and light every, uh, it'll sample it once a second for about a month, and then it would pop off. We would actually see a time course of where the squid went in the water column on a one second uh, resolution, which is really quite good. The hope is that this research will also yield clues to the oceanic conditions that have led to this invasion. One of the mysteries about the squid and why they're here is what exactly is causing, uh, facilitating the range expansion. And we know, uh, mostly from Professor Bill Gilley's work, that they seem to have an affinity for a low oxygen environment. As things like plankton die, they descend through the water column from the photic zone above. At about 600 to 1,000 meters, the decomposition of this organic material takes away oxygen and creates an area called the midwater oxygen minimum zone. Only certain animals can survive here, and it seems to be a place where the squid thrive. So what's happening locally, there's some preliminary signs that uh, this midwater low oxygen environment that the squid uh, utilize and, and actually seem to thrive in uh, is, is expanding. It's getting uh, sort of shallower. It's expanding toward the surface in the water. So it's a, their, their favorable environment is getting bigger. And in a way, I think the squid is probably an organism that's ideally suited to climate change. Overfishing of the squid's competitors and predators is also helping them to thrive. But they still have one healthy predator who's not afraid of their hard-fighting aggression. When we first caught these squid, it was really something to figure out how to deal with. We bring these things over the side, you've got anglers screaming for the gaff, there's squid all over, there's ink all over, there's people dodging squid, people are exhausted, but they want to go back down. I tell people, rest when you get home. You don't have an opportunity to do anything like this anywhere else. Of course, once you bag a jumbo squid, the next question most people ask is, what do they taste like? The Humboldt squid are very good to eat. When we clean these Humboldt squid, we're left with a piece about the size of a doormat. Very good. <laughs> Given the threat that these ravenous predators present, it would be hard to feel guilty about consuming Humboldt squid. Think of it this way. If you don't eat them now, they may be the only coastal fishery left. <laughs>